I want to start off by thanking you. Thank you for your prayers. I've been on a prayer corner for quite a while. I've had a rough time. I got two pig valves and a ring around another valve. I had a Caesar. I had a stroke. My left side went out on me. I think it went down to South America. <laughs> I was in the hospital in the nursing home for two months. I had a lot of time to, on my hands. One of the things that really stuck to me, what's happening to our church? Where are the people? Why are they leaving? And since this is the time of the year that our ICA people are making their final decision, I thought it'd be good for us to ask ourselves, why are we Catholics? Why are we here? Just because it was baptized? Being baptized, did that give us the knowledge, the complete learning of our faith? It was only a start, wasn't it? You know, even after First Communion, that was not enough. Being confirmed was not enough. We can't ever stop learning about our faith all our life long. You know, it's like going to school for the first day. Did you get enough knowledge to get your high school diploma? No, you had to study for, what, 12 years? We're the same with our faith. We need to study it all the time. And if we don't, we have a chance of walking away. We can trace our church all the way back to Jesus. You know, he, what did he tell Peter? On this rock, I'll build my church. If you want to, you can trace the, the one we call the Pope all the way back to Peter. I think there's 266 of them. You know, if we, if we lived in the first hundred years of the church and he wanted to know what was being taught, what to live, how to live. You couldn't go to the New Testament. You couldn't say, I'll look it up in a book. There was none. The New Testament did not start this church. The church gave us the New Testament by the working of the Holy Spirit. You know, there's many writings at that time but the Holy Spirit inspired the church, the leaders of the church. Which writings were inspired to be included in the New Testament? And where did, the, where did we get this authority? Where did the church get this authority? What did Jesus tell him when he ascended? Stay here, wait here, until you're clothed with the power from on high. We celebrate that on Pentecost. It'll be here, the Holy Spirit is here. Be here to the end of time. He's here right now with us. Do we listen to him? If we do, all doubts are gone. All worries of our faith is gone. And it's not, it's not easy to know, to choose what is right. We can be led astray. Anything that contradicts our church is wrong. We can't hold error and right together. You know, it's like going to school for the first time and this little guy 
he was determined that two and two was five. It took a long time for them to convince him he was wrong. But he went to school and he was free from his mistake. That's what we are. If we have a mistake in our faith, if we listen to the church, it will free us from it. But we have to listen. You know, the church stands today. It's been here 2,000 years. It'll be here to the end of time. Many, many attempts have come along to destroy it. One of the things now seems to be we'll teach falsehood. We'll destroy the church by teaching falsehood. We'll teach people not to listen to the Holy Spirit, not to correct their mistakes. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Empires have come. They've gone. Church is still here, telling the world about the Son of God. You know, today we had two gospel readings we could choose from. I chose the one about darkness. And if we're not careful, we'll be led into darkness. And where do we stand? Do we walk into the light or walk into the darkness? With our free will, we decide. Our other reading was about the blind guy. Not much of the gospel was about him, mainly about the leaders, how they would not accept Jesus as the Son of God. And why wouldn't they accept him? Where was the Old Testament Holy Spirit? What do we say in our creed? He spoke through the prophets. In the Old Testament time, the Holy Spirit spoke through the prophets. Just like today in the New Testament, he speaks to us through the church. What's our decision? Are we gonna stay? We're we gonna walk away. You know, we can see for ourselves, many, many have walked away. Jesus asked Peter, do you want to walk away? What was Peter's answer? To whom shall we go? You have words of eternal life, everlasting life, and we've come to believe you're the Son of God. Only the Son of God could raise the dead, heal the sick, cure the blind, feed the thousands of people. No one else could have done that but the Son of God. And you have eternal life, everlasting life. Isn't that what we all want? Everlasting life. If our faith is firm, if we believe in this church, ready to shed our blood for it if necessary, we will be firm. We'll never walk away. You know, Jesus came to die for us. He didn't die for the angels. God loves us. He proved it by sending his son. Do we love him? Sometimes we refuse. When we was little, we stepped on the toes of those we love. When we got older, we stepped on their hearts. Isn't that what we do to God? When we live in his light, with our small sins, we step on his toes. When we walk in the darkness and our serious sins, we're stepping on his heart. Is there anything more painful than a broken heart? We're not just a body. We're not just a soul. We are the person in charge of this body, this soul. Where are we walking it? Into the darkness, into the light.